I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is June 20th, 2018, and in this video, I'm going over three Linux commands. What are they? Cat, WC, and sort. And also, I'm going over a little bit about piping. Okay, so cat. So before I get started with cat, I want to do some inf get some information in a couple of files so I can actually, you know, use cat to show you. Uh, so I'm going to use Vi here really quickly and make some files. I'm not going to go into Vi right now, and, but if you know Vi, fine. If not, you're going to kind of ignore what I'm doing right now. So I'll do uh, file underscore 01.txt, which is just making a text file. And what I'm going to do is here at, uh, I found this random IP generator. It's kind of nice to just use so I can show you some things. So browserling.com tools random IP. And we'll just go over here and make 100 random. So we'll generate 100 random IPs. And I will just copy all those and hopefully paste them in here. There we go. And let me make a couple more. Let me just make a file underscore 02.txt. And let me generate some new ones. And then finally, a 03.txt. Oh, didn't copy them. Okay, copy. I hit the wrong button. Hit the wrong button. Keep hitting the wrong button. There we go. Okay, so now I got my three files. So that's an important thing to bring up. Oh, and let me, I'm on my local SIGWIN, but let me go over to an Ubuntu machine. So let me figure that out real quick. So let me secure copy all those over to, eh, I have an Nginx machine here. I'll just copy those over real quick. You don't need to know secure copy at this point, you know, secure copy another command. I'm not going over today, but I just want to. Copy those guys over. Oh, no, not. How about an HA proxy box? J proxy. There we go. Okay. Okay, so now we're over in this box. I should have those files, as well as some folders I made yesterday. So there's those files. So cat. <laughs> now we're back to cat. So cat is for concatenate. And so it's kind of funny where you want, might want to uh, put two files together. So literally, I can do cat file01.txt, and what it will actually do is just output the content of that file out to the terminal here, out to the screen. And so there's the contents. Now, I can actually concatenate multiple files. That's why it's concatenate. So this is one of the oldest tools around. So now if I do file01, file02, if you see right there, the bottom one is 73, 130, but now I'm gonna concatenate both of them together. And so you can see that's the end of the second file. And so I can actually concatenate all three. So all three went through the screen. So, so far I didn't do anything. I just concatenated all three together. They just, in sequence, it listed every single one and they all went to the screen, which is nice and dandy and fine. But what you really want to do, you can do a few things with this. And really cat is one of the things you use. It's probably the most common tool I use, I would think. Uh, because funny, you actually use it for a lot of things. So I can, there's a few things I can do. So I can concatenate these and I can do this, which is going to say, take whatever's on this mean output of the screen basically, and then send it into a file. So I'll call it new file.txt. It's going to create a new file. And if the new file exists, it will overwrite it. It'll delete it and it'll put this information in. And so now I can cat new file and you, can, you can't see it right now. I'll show you it with another command. There's actually, both of those files have been put together in that new command. Uh, also, another thing you may wanna know is you can do two of these and that means append. This means wipe it out and make a new one. That means append. So if I do that, it'll actually append those two files to the end of this file again. Or I could do, you know, I could do that one, which would, the results of that would actually be the first two were already there, and this third one would be appended on the end, and now you've got all three. Uh, also, I could do things like that, cat, do, the, do things like this. I could do cat file star, which actually will get all three of them at once. And so, can't see it right now, but it does get all three. So that's what we use cat for. Now, and honestly, and I'll show you some of the next commands, 
We use cat all the time because we pipe it out to something else. Uh, we, we like in this case, like say, say you had a bunch, a list of IPs in a, in a folder, in a file, uh, and you wanted to do something with them, like ping them or touch them or do something. I could cat out that file, pipe it to another command and then do something with it. Like, you know, log in each one, it can sync log in each one and do something or ping them or something. So it's something you use a lot, a lot. So there is the very basics of cat. And so with that now, let's go on to the next command, which is word count. And so word count, now we can actually see this. So I can say word count file uh, underscore zero one. And what that is, WC is word count. So what it will do is actually, it'll count all the text and lines of code in there, lines in the file. So what you'll see here, is you have, uh, well, this actually works correctly. Let's see, I know I'm gonna get out of order. So it gives you three numbers. One of the numbers is the word. How many words are in your file? And right now, each one of these IP addresses is a word. So in fact, let me edit one real quick so I can make sure I know which one's which. Word. So if I do that, now there's an extra word on that line, right? So now if I do that, okay, there we go. So the first one is the number of lines in that file. So there you go, 100. And the second one is the number of words in that file. And the third one is actually the, the individual characters in that file. So if this happened to have 1,444 characters, it has 101 words and 100 lines. And then it tells you what file it actually it is. Useful if you're doing certain things, but I use it a lot for, I use it a, a lot for what you might not think if you're not used to this command. So let me go back in here and delete this, that, so there we go. Boom. Uh, also, I can come in here and do something like this. File, word count, file, star, and it will get everything it finds. And so actually, you'll, the nice thing is it'll list per file, so it shows each individual file and the total. Very useful in some cases if you're trying to uh, access something, figure out what's going on. But uh, what I do is I typically don't care about the characters or the word. What I care, care about is the number of lines in there. So you can do wc-l, which will only return the lines. And so I can do the same thing here, file star, and we'll see each one here has 100 lines uh, in the text file, which is very useful if you're catting things out. So let's say I want to, I have a file here that I know has a bunch of IP addresses, but I'm not sure how many. I would cat that out, and then I would do what's called a pipe. And that is right above the enter key. So shift, you know, right above there, there's that, that's pipe. So you do that and then you pipe it into word count and I do WC-L and I can see there's 100 lines in there. Let me go change that because 100 lines is a little boring. So let me go down to the end. I'll just delete a bunch of file, bunch of lines. Okay, now we can look at it again. I have 71 lines. So I can go in there and say, I know each line is an IP address. Now I know I have 71 lines. And now I can actually use this to go assess what we did before with cat, where we actually cat it two files and put them into one file. So I can say cat new file, word count dash L, which I think the last command we did on that had all three in there. So it should be 300. And there we go. But let me go overwrite that. So I could say, I could say uh, files, right? And that would do every single one of them. And let me overwrite new file. And so now I reduced that one to 71. So I should in theory have 271 lines in there once I do this. And there I go, 271 lines. I use this a lot when I'm trying to assess what's going on uh, or to see how bad a command is because maybe it's a really big piece of code or a bunch of information. So very, very useful. Um, okay, so next one, sort. Okay, sort is a very useful thing. So I can come in here. And I can say sort and I can say file 01. You know, let me make a new file because this will be a little confusing otherwise at first. So let me say, we'll just overwrite the new file, right? I'll erase everything and say Abby, Jim, Zoe, uh, Carl, Smith. Just a bunch of words. But they're out of order. So right now I could cat them out and you can see they're out of order but I can sort them. So there's a few things I can do. I can do a sort, new file, and now you'll see it sorted in alphabetical order, which is kind of nice for a lot of reasons. Uh, also, I could have just cut it out. Normally, I don't 
say sort new file, I'll usually say cat just by habit, even though the results are pretty much the same. Uh, and so cat new file, sort, and there you go. Um, now you also can do, you know, so I could, yeah, I could do cat sort and I, just, you could also reverse it. There's a dash R for reverse. Sometimes you might need to do that, which reverses it. And, um, now I'm going to show some hacks at the end, but right now if I try to sort some of those IP addresses, let me go this, because what will happen is it'll sort it normally how you would sort it like in Word or something like that. It'll go alphanumeric and it'll go by number. But that's not how you sort IP addresses. So if I if I cat this out and I sort it, you'll see the sort's going to be not how I would want it. So in my world, the nine should come far before eighty nine, because really I want nine and nine dot ten dot eleven dot somewhere down then eighty nine dot. But right now it doesn't do that because it sees the dot. So it sees the nine ninety. It's your typical sort. Now there's a way around that, and I'll kind of go over that here at the end. Um, when I do a little bit of hack stuff. So there are some problems with sort, but you can get around them and I'll show that in a second. Okay, so next, piping. Okay, I've, I've been doing piping here. So uh, piping is something very useful. This is where you get all your power in Linux. Linux has all these simple commands that are really, really good at doing one thing. I'm really good at sorting. I'm really good at catting. I'm really, doing, really good at doing word counts. And so what you can do is you can pipe those commands together. So the output of one goes into the next. And so I can concatenate and have this output of multiple files and then I could sort them. And then I could do other things to them. Like you can, I'm not going to do the command right now, but you can grep through them, which grep means search through them and reduce. So you could, you could filter out, you could filter out what you don't want. And then you could sort them at the end. So you can kind of clink these together. So as an example, Gosh, I'll show this, even though I'm not going to regret right now. So I could say cat file, which will cat all the files, you know, just tons of stuff. And then I could say, you know what, I'm going to sort them, even though it's the wrong sort right now. So sort them, it'll be the typical sort. Uh, well, no, 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 let me grep. So I'll do an egrep, and I'll say, you know what, I only want things that start with uh, 90. And so if I do that, you can see, oh, there's only one. Well, let me try nine. There you go. Things that start with a nine. So I got it. So now I've reduced that list and then I can sort it. Now, again, I'm still getting the weird sort and, you know, and then I could put it out to a new file. So now I could have my list of exactly what I want. And so you can see I can, you can connect these together with these pipes. So piping is very important. Piping is very wonderful. It does all kinds of cool stuff makes Linux very powerful. Uh, now for whatever hacks I wrote down here. Okay, so I have the random IP addresses. So one problem is, like I'm showing right now, is if I, you know, cat them all out, pipe it, and I do a sort, I don't get the sort that I want. There's a couple of ways, ar ways around this. Uh, one way I found years ago is very nasty and it turns out there's a simpler way to do it but the nasty way is interesting to know because you might have a more complex thing going on so i'll do it here just for sake so you can do a dash n dash t uh dot dash k and then you can start defining how you're going to do these sorts and so since right now we have so this is basically you're going to do a numerical sort and the t is like designating your what is it designating? It's designating what what's going to be in between. So let me say sort dash dash help. If I do a dash t, there you go. Field separator. The field separator. Uh, in this case, the field separator is a dot. I don't really care about the dot. It's a field separator. So you can get really complex. So you can say it's going to be numeric. There's a, the field separator is a dot, and then you start defining stuff. So there's a one dash one, two dash two dash k these are these are this we have four these are ipv4 addresses so we have four sets of numbers and that's what these are doing these k's so you can do this which is a bit nasty and if you do that it will sort it in the way that i intended it so now if i go up here and look at the very top you can see this is sorted exactly how i'd want it so you can see there's the 24 and then 100 105 so it's actually sorts by the first set of numbers then the second set of numbers and the third and so you get exactly what you want, which is really nice and useful. You don't have to do that. 
you may need to use something like that if you have a real complicated sort, but you can actually, it actually has this dash V. Oh, let me go back and there's a capital V. Let me see if they explain it here. There you go, dash V, version sort, a natural sort. So it kind of figures things out for you. So rather than do all that nastiness, I could do a capital V and I get the same results. So one time I found this way of doing this complicated sort, I was very happy because I needed to use it for some project. And then years later, someone said, why aren't you using dash V, this capital V? I didn't know about it. And I, there we go, we found it. Um, let's see. Oh, another slight hack that's interesting, even though I haven't gone over this command. Oh, let me see if, if this is the case. There's a chance. Well, if there's a chance, I can, I can make it happen. Uh, if I look at this, I'll do a word count. There's 271 in there. There could be duplicates. There's a command called unique, which I'll probably go over in another session at some point. But the unique basically says, hey, only show me one of each one. But it only does that if the if it's an order. So if I have, for example, this guy, if he's at the bottom and he's at the top, both will show up. They have to be sorted and in order. Otherwise, it won't. It's unique and it's only it'll show one line if the next line is the same. It'll kind of collapse them. So if I do unique, and then do I then I do a word count dash l. Oh, see, every one of these is unique. So if I do a I'll do a copy, copy file one into file four dot text. So I copy that file over. So now if I do that, I'll see 342 of which I should have lots of dupes. Yeah, you can see there's a lot of duplicates right there. And so I can pipe that out into unique. So now you see they go away and I work count dash out. I'm back to 271. So there you go. There are the three commands that I went over this time. We went over cat, word and sound, and sort, and plus a couple little hacks. So that's it for this video, and hopefully I'll do some more soon because this is kind of fun. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Patman Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.